it's amazing. Every time I step out to a club, anywhere, like people are all with it. What's it like back home, Rich? My bad. What's it like back home? Yeah, you been back to Richmond yet? I have been back, but it was on it was on like the come like it was like early on. So like if I was to come back now, it would be a completely different story from when I was there. But like when I was there, you know, I wasn't really getting noticed like that because it was still on its way up. But like if I was to go back there now, <laughs> it would be a different story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? ATL Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. And here's the thing about it, man. We over here by the old Tech Wood, um, over here by Georgia Tech, right here in the heart of Atlanta downtown. Well, look, though, y'all, it's another episode of Grind Media TV. For most of y'all that watching, y'all kind of know what's going on. Uh, we got to be somewhere in the streets of Atlanta, moving around. And right now, got my boy from Texas, Will. He finna let y'all know what he got going on in motion and, and, and some of the stuff that he allowed me the pleasure to be able to meet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right now it's all about Junebug, man. You feel what I'm saying? Junebug, <laughs> <laughs> man. Uh, dope, man. I've been with, with, with the homie for a shoot. I ain't know him 24 hours, but I got a lot of respect for him already, man. You know, look out for dude, you know? Let him know what you got practice. Going crazy right now. For those that don't know, my name is Junebug. I got the Junebug Challenge going crazy. International, national, however you want to call it. Everybody's doing it. Uh, we spreading peace and positivity. That's all that I'm all, all about. Um, dancing, I'm a dancer, director, uh, editor, jack of all trades type of guy. Um, but yeah, my message is just being yourself, being carefree, not caring about the haters, and uh, you know what I'm saying? That black boy joy, that's what I'm all about. So for the people that's out there, you want to tell them where you're from? Yes, sir. I'm, uh, I'm from uh, Richmond, California. Not Richmond, Virginia. Uh, Richmond, California, Bay Area. Um, yeah, I moved out to uh, L.A. to pursue my dreams about three years ago. You know what I'm saying? Things are finally turning around. So so as a kid growing up doing the music, who were some of your influencers? Who, who, who did you like listen to? It was big. Uh, as a kid, like... <clears throat> It's weird, because, like, I'm an old soul, so, like, a lot of my influence came from, like, uh, my local radio station. So, my, my dad, like, brainwashed me when I was younger <laughs> into, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Tony, 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 like, okay. you know, Luther Vandross, like, all, a, a lot of old school R&B. But as far as, like, the, the, the people I was listening to when I was, like, a kid, it was, like, Mr. Fab, uh, E-40, Too okay. Short. You know, the whole hyphy the whole hyphy era, you know what I'm saying, was a big influence on us. What you think about the verses with uh Too Short and E Forty? Oh man, it was it was crazy. Like a lot, a lot of people was hating on it because it's like yeah. in the bay we got our own sound and whatnot, but like us back home we was going stupid to Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I got a close home but he managed too short. Uh -huh. And I was like, I said, man, was uh, I said, was was E forty on one? Well, that's really how you get down. He said, that's how you get down. Found the baby, you know what I'm saying? I love that man. You know, I enjoyed it, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know me being an older dude in hip hop, it was dope just to see the evolution of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. see two of the greats, it's still young, still looking fly. You know what I'm saying? I Coming love together, this shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It wasn't, it wasn't even on no, no, like battle yeah. type. You know, it was just like two homies having fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, yeah. Look like they would have went all night if they could. Yeah, right, yeah. So they, had hits, they had hits. They had hits. Yeah, for real. They had big yeah. hits. Big hits. Big hits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, when did you notice that you wanted to do music? Like, what was going on in your life around that time when you just said, or, or like, what, like, what was going on in your life when you said you wanted to do music? Uh, not music, but but uh, getting into videos, like dancing and stuff like that. Okay. So, um, it's funny because like my story is like. I had hoop dreams in high school, middle school. So my, my, my whole life was devoted to like trying to get a scholarship for basketball. It never really worked out for me uh, throughout high school. So like, you know, as soon as I got to college, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I realized how much I didn't love it. You know what I'm saying? For, for me to really commit myself to trying to get a scholarship. So, you know, that, that period of time after, after college, I was really this soul searcher really. and. You know, like I said uh, in the beginning, like I've always been a fan of old music, 
and you know, music and dance go hand in hand. So I started to mature after high school. Um, wasn't shy no more, wasn't timid no more. I started to dance and uh, video was, was hand in hand with that as well. So I started to record myself dancing, going out to parties, getting my confidence and it just started to just snowball into me just becoming like a whole personality. So you know, after high school, I really started to find myself and you know what I'm saying, I started to mature real fast. Okay. Yeah. Now, now he said a lot, but I, I want to kind of rewind it, you know, back to the to the sports situation. You know, bring him up to date on that, like let him know, like, like what was going on with you in the sports, like, but you said basketball, what shooting guard, what point guard, what? I was a I was a uh, I was a point guard. My my height was like a point guard, so like you know five eleven and whatnot. But um, you know anybody who knows sports in the day and age we live now with basketball, like you got to be able to shoot. If you can shoot, you know what I'm saying, shoot the basketball, you could you could play anywhere. Yeah. So my dad used to work me out and like make sure I was a scoring guard. So I used to be able to, sh you know, I used to have to shoot like thousand shots a day, you know, make at least 500 of them, you know what I'm saying? Really putting in that work. So it's funny just to see the work I put in back then. Like, even though it never amounted to anything, yeah. just the work ethic, I like, you know, work at, he taught me uh, a certain work ethic. I can apply it to anything I do in my life now. So like, you know, whether it's editing, whether it's me working on my dance moves, whether it's me studying film, like I'm taking those same that same ethics and applying that to like, what what I do now, and it's working out. So I didn't do it for no reason. You know what I'm saying? I'm not in the NBA. I didn't get a scholarship. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm here doing doing something. So and that's the point I wanted to kind of make sure y'all understood. Um, it's it's a work ethic too. So. No matter whatever talent that y'all decide to do or want to take advantage of, understand that you also got to put in some work, and and, and it yeah, starts shit. from training. It's hard work, real training. I don't care how you get that training or what way, but get it so that you know you got to put in some work. But um, back to the man of the hour. Um, like, when did you notice that the song was gonna end up being such a big hit? Like, what the song? That's too. Yeah. Uh, man, the song was actually already trending. Uh, so that's how I ended up seeing it on TikTok. Um, and anybody, anybody who knows, like on TikTok, you always have to do what everybody else is doing um, in order for you to be relevant or in order for you to like, you know, gain some followers or whatnot. So I decided to do dance to the song as well. Like there was already a challenge out with four minds. Somebody doing a dance, a certain dance to the to the song, but, but I didn't like the dance at all. Um, so I just did my own dance to the song, and that's when it took off. Like it really took off. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what what has been the craziest thing as far as that situation? Like when you go out and do events and you just be performing, how the reaction be like? Like. It be, it be, I mean, everybody be loving it, you know, because it's like it's dance music. You know, in, in these times we live in it right now, like everybody is looking for a, a way to like release, you know, and just have fun. So I think it's just a perfect opportunity for me to really get my name out there with bringing people together. So everybody's all for it. You know, nobody's hating, nobody's, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody's just having fun and that's what people need right now. So it's amazing. Every time I step out to a club, anywhere, like people are all with it. What's it like back home, Rich? My bad. What's it like back home? You, have you been back to Richmond yet? I have been back, but it was on. It was on like the come. Like it was like early on. So like, if I was to come back now, it would be a completely different story from when I was there. But like when I was there, you know, I wasn't really getting noticed like that because it was still on its way up. But like, if I was to go back there now, <laughs> it would be a different story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? ATL Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and here's the thing about it, man. We over here by the old Tech Wood, um, over here by Georgia Tech, right here in the heart of Atlanta downtown and whatnot. For a lot of y'all don't know, um, Tech Wood was one of the communities that um, was heavy in a lot of the crime that took place. But now they kind of cleaned it up and changed everything. But with that being said, this, this is a very bright young man. And I also want y'all to understand, too, that he also has um, He's very bright, you know. When we came in, we were talking right about the, um, yeah. the protest and, and a lot of that stuff that was going on. And um, how do y'all feel about 
that as a people, what do we need to be able to, let's, let's talk about police brutality, we want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, um, what can we do to fix those issues in, in, in the black community? Oh man, that's a, that's a loaded question. Because I, I feel like, I think, I think what I took from last year, you know, just from everything and, and George Floyd and all this, protest and shooting and all that. I, I think I took like, um, can't rely on, completely rely on the, the system or the police, you know, system with, with solving my problem. I think a lot of it is, it, it, it's gonna come from us developing our own communities and you know, how it used to be, you know what I'm saying? With the Black Panthers and everything, like we was, we was governing ourselves, you know what I'm saying? And you know, we didn't rely on anybody else. So I think us being in this position again and seeing how, you know, the country feels about us and how like it's how much has really changed from you know, from the police system and just the legislation and whatnot. I don't rely on legislation for our, our own freedom, our own li uh, liberation. I don't rely on the police to fix our problems. And so it's like I feel like a lot of black people in this country feel like it's unfair or it's almost like a surprise that we're still in the same position. So I feel like until we get to the point where it's like we are stop relying on the system to fix our problems, like that's when our real growth is gonna come. So, you know. Amen to that. Yeah. That goes on there. That, that's the truth, you know. Yeah, it most definitely gotta uh, start from within. Yeah. You definitely gotta learn how to look in the mirror. You most definitely gotta try to figure out what it is that you can do to kind of not add to that trend of uh, 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 broken spirits going on around and whatnot. But um, how do you feel? Of, with that being said, how do you feel about so much crime in the community as far as you know how we treat each other from the killing? Because I mean, all across the nation, I'm quite sure every city is the, the killing and the spite and, and it's growing. Um, how do you feel about that in the black community? What, what do we need to do to fix some of those? Well, I mean, I think it's wherever you go, as far as poverty, that's where crime is gonna happen. So, you know, it's a crabs in the barrel situation wherever you go, wherever, wherever that's crime is at. But um, a lot of this, a lot of the, the issues that's going on in our community is, is we gotta point to like the origin of everything. Like, you know, knowing where things coming from. It's like, you know, when people commit crimes, it's in, you know, where we're looking for, or people are looking for like a way to feed themselves, you know? So it's, in order for you to have something for yourself, you gotta take from somebody else. So it's like, the fact that we have that going on in our community, it's like, it's a really hard, you know what I'm saying, mission in order for us to really stop taking from each other because the position we're in right now is like self-survival. And that's a really hard, like, survival is like... Guys, what you said is the key thing is, how did this happen? Like, we have to own up to what our yeah. government did to us. Yeah. Until I, I'm with you, anybody, my father said, that's, I just peached that. Until we are owned up to, this is why our fathers were in jail, this is why our fathers are dead, this is why the homies were smoking each other. We're gonna keep the night. My mission in life is to wake our people up to that. Sure. So I got a lot of documentaries based on that and showing you. I got a badass documentary based on how the government and the police force have been crooked since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. Like, in, have you ever watched the uh, uh, Gangs in New York? I know you've seen Gangs in New York. Oh, the movie. Leonardo DiCaprio. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was based on a true, true time in history where. The uh, the mayor of New York was a Republican. Same shit just happened with Trump. He didn't want to get out of office. They said his police force was crooked. So the new governor they got, the Democrat that got elected, their police forces met up and fought. <laughs> like fucking, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it these crooked motherfuckers from that time. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? So it's like we gotta know that shit. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And we gotta get these white folks on our team. It's like Chris. Yeah, I think mean, that's the only way we're gonna win is by unity. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's what they want. They want us divided. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sure. 
It, it, it most definitely too. When um, you start talking on them levels too, you got to understand um, spirit. It, it moves freely. So any type of spirit that you're dealing with can travel amongst <laughs> pretty much anything. But um, those certain spirits that are designed to control and and, 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 and dominate, they will. Um, they're, they're very tricky. You know, I, I don't know all the way to say it, but but no, it, it, it shifts and, and whatnot. But um, and it takes a lot of work and a lot of knowledge to be able to be aware and, and, and to kind of fix that. Like, you know, um, power, you know, and, and when people want power, they do bad things for power, you know. Um, I think that's what's wrong with the world right now. The wrong people have the power. Yeah. And they're doing wrong by it. Like, no, we spend $1.3 trillion a year with black people. All we gotta do is spend that with ourselves and we take our power. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? But you got black leaders that are coons that are working for the government right. to make sure we don't revolt. Right. And we have to like, man, uh, um, uh, Stokey Carmichael said the best thing, before we go worry about taking over white people and the government, we gotta clean up the black people first. Yeah. Clean up our own house. These gang bangers and these motherfuckers ain't doing right. Yeah. You know, just give him a chance first. I think it's one of our favorite stuff we said. He said, we give Uncle Tom's two chances. If they ain't, if they ain't uh, converted by the second test, it's time to offer him. I love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's so bitch ass on. Can't, 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 <laughs> you feel uh, can't re rehabilitate everybody. Yeah, yeah, but let's try because we know that our people got fucked up by the yeah. government. So let's help them. Yeah. But if you want to still be out here stupid, like, man, like Atlanta crazy right now. It's Y'all went to Lenny's Mall, metal detectors. Yeah. Look, kids yeah. that got killed. Oh, I ain't never been. In, I ain't never been in the mall. I walked through a metal detector. Nah, look, I don't know if the little girl <laughs> died at Lenny's Mall, but like in in Buckhead, a little girl got shot in a crossfire. It's been probably about what ten shootings in the mall. It, it, it's horrible, you know. <laughs> and, and the thing that stands out is social engineering. You know, um, when you start speaking up on that and start speaking up on those situations, understand that they study. You know. Um, they study, I like to say, and they predict trends and they understand that and whatnot, you know. Information, they have a lot of information and they, and they will use it to kind of manipulate, oppress, and, and, and do whatever they need to kind of stay in control and, and whatnot. Funny story, I was filming a documentary with the, the Morris Ford lynching, and uh, you, you know what's this? I can't, I, I can't, I can't really remember the city, but it's in Georgia. and. Long story short, dude came home from war. I don't know what happened with his wife and a white man. And they got into it and the nigga stabbed the white man. So he had enough money, he bailed out of jail. A fucking lynch mob came and killed both the couples. Ripped they baby, they, they both the couples were pregnant, ripped they fucking babies out. And the crazy part about it is so I'm filming the behind the scenes of the, the reenactment. They reenact it every year. And it started raining. So I had to go get all the equipment, make sure it was up. And I didn't know this is how God worked, that they were still shooting. So when I back went back on set, the governor, and he ended up dying right right after he got elected. He was reenacting a real speech that he did. And I remember like yesterday, he says, if y'all elect me a governor of Georgia, I'm gonna make sure black people never get power and white people keep their power. And I figured it out at that moment. You feel what I'm saying? And I fucked the moment. I'm, Cause I'm doing interviews with the people, and it was two young brothers and sisters that that spoke at the rally. They were from that town, and I asked them afterwards. I said, I said, did the white folks teach y'all learn? Because in the reenactment, when they killed him, they said we gonna teach these niggas never put their hands on a white man again. And we're gonna take never, no nigger ever does this. And bye bye, they killed him, right? So I asked the niggas from the town, I said, did they teach y'all? And the fucked up part about it is one of the dudes, he became a revolutionary at the CNN Center. Like, he didn't know. they like, oh, you from that town? You didn't know about this? And they said that the black people weren't allowed to even talk about it. That's how mentally they fucked our heads. Fucked me up, but the point I'm saying is, that's the whole thing is they don't and that's what we just we gotta learn is the evil white people the evil people period it's only a small amount but they are such genius masterminds that they got us all fooled and as soon as we detect they bitch ass it's over cause I got a gang of homeboys like him 
You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, you can't tell me all white people ain't wrong. They're bad. Nah, I'm just good white. Some white people better than us, man. If somebody get murdered right here, they're gonna stand up on trial. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, my mama, man, you feel me? Straight up. And, and that's the thing I I, I want to kind of, you know, point out too. Like I said, that spirit is so easy when somebody got more and power to put a spirit up inside you. You know, they can do it through the TVs. If they got your ears, they got your eyes, they got the ability to put that spirit in you. You know, you just gotta be strong enough to fight it and stuff. And, and most definitely when you move around in this nightlife, and that you feel the energy per se, a month and it's around you in real life, real flat, because we're talking to you through the camera, but in real life, you are around the energy. You got to understand it's strong to it, and, and, it is just, and it's wrapped up in fun. That's the key, it's wrapped up in fun. So while you're out there having fun, you know, you're opening yourself up for, for a spirit that you might not know how to operate if it, if it attaches itself, if it attaches itself to you. So That's you know, true. just be careful. But uh, like I said, but back to the start, man. I know we kind of got thrown off. We want him. We, I want you to see his personality all around and stuff. As you can see, he plays sports. Um, he he started out doing videos and stuff. Like, what made you want to do videos? Like, uh, really, I think what really made me start getting into like just uh, just showing my personality and, and uh, having fun was, I actually had like a. a a really, I was in a really trying time with like my mom. My mom was like, um, nah, I, I can't wait till I can pay somebody to get off my Man, that's what I'm saying. I gotta do too much shit to sit, to sit down. And like, I just did all this shit earlier and I can't find the fucking file. You can tell the real video editor, they keep that laptop on. <laughs> I was mad at my shit yesterday. Man, I ain't burn mine downtown, but I'm going to have it in the trunk. So what you like uh, in and uh, Adobe? Yeah, bro. Oh, my bad. Adobe? Yeah. Adobe Premiere Pro? You didn't start a mess with After Effects, too? Which one? After Effects. You didn't start a mess with that? Oh, uh, nah. I want to get into that, though. I just don't know what I would use After Effects for. It's very time or something. It's very yeah. It's a beast though, once you kind of figure out the power of them layers and being able to um, you have more control over kind of erasing the videos and blending them in together and mm -hmm. putting certain groups of videos and object and working it in, how can I say, three-dimensional space, yeah. like, yeah. Like, <laughs> like depth of field with like, you can have this project sitting back in space on that one and bring it up. And yeah. it I definitely wanted to do that learn how to do that somehow and incorporate it into writer going on for sure. After effects. You'll be his person. Yeah, yeah. After effects will suck. Yeah. Yeah, I ain't I ain't really learned it yet, but it is. I know what he's talking about. Yeah. Fifteen seconds of, of something after effects take you about three or four days just to do it. You know? Yeah. So people get paid good money, people that can pull that off. Yeah. Well um for most of y'all that watching, like I said, um, we here doing an interview with Junebug and he let you know what's going on. Um, and he was explaining to me at the time when the tape cut off um, how he ended up getting into doing videos and um, he was that way more on. He was at home and he was dealing with the issue of your mother. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah she, was, uh, she was going through uh, a trying time with her health and whatnot, so she was in a lot. She was in and out of a convalescent home, um, a nursing home, and it would just be me and my brother at the house. So I'll have a lot of downtime, there's a lot of free time just for me to just, you know, kind of take my mind off of what was going on with her. So the only things, one of the things that really kept me happy was obviously being able to dance, being able to listen to music, um, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, so I would just, you know, I actually ended up stumbling, stumbling upon like a new dance style that I, I've seen on my, my phone, on YouTube, that I really was intrigued by. And I just devoted my time to just learning how to do that dance style through videos. And that dance style was the, uh, called the Harlem Shake. That's the old, that's the old Harlem Shake, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, what is that? What is that? Like, the shoulders. So that's what I spent a lot of my time doing, like over like six months. You know, cause she, she was in and out of, the, of that home. So, um, yeah, 
that's what took up a lot of my time and took my mind off of what she was going, what was going on with her. And I'm uh, definitely sorry to hear that. I mean, in fact, kind of that type of situation. Um, so I, I, and, and hearing him talk, you know, one thing that kind of stands out is his, the role that his daddy played. You know, I, I want us to really stress that right about now in the black community. Um, you want to bring him up to date on some of the role that his daddy played in your musical success as well as your training that you got growing up in yeah. sports or whatever? Yeah, my, my dad my dad has been, uh, like, instrumental in my, like, maturation as a, as a, a man and as a person. Um, my dad had his own, ha has his own uh, business, so he's been an entrepreneur as far as I can remember. Um, yeah, and he, you know, was the one to really, like, um, really like culminate my, my personality or just my character as a person because my mom was the one who you know she paid the bill she was a nurse so I would barely ever see my mom so she was the one that was always taking care of the bills at my house and uh, you know putting in after hours overtime so I barely ever see her so my dad was the one that really you know he had time off he had people working for him so he was the one that was really always around me uh, being able to teach me certain things about, you know, being a good person in my, uh, my life and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, my dad really raised me. My mom really gave me a life uh, after, you know, she passed away. Being able to give me, like, you know, with money that I could actually put up and invest and whatnot. So, you know, she she put it down for me. My brother, that was her sacrifice to me. So. Um, my dad really put it down for me and my brother, and he still is putting it down. So it's like, yeah, he really taught me how to be a man. And, yeah, it's really important that people, you know, have their uh, their fathers in their lives because, you know, I can't imagine if I didn't have them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd be lost. So and that's what most of us are. Yeah, for sure. And we want to just highlight that, and I, I, I double slew them, man. I, I double slew them. So if you get a chance to watch it, <laughs> congratulations and salute from the bottom of my heart for what you did. Um, um so the event tonight, last night, what where, where y'all was at last night? Vibes, man, that was my first time. It's seeing Buddy do a show, you know what I'm saying? It's well worth it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what you're getting booked for right now. I know it's going up. Yeah. But like it was entertaining, <laughs> watching the people get entertained, you know. It was dope, you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's, it's a real show, you know what I'm saying? Like, motherfuckers say, oh yeah, he's just famous on the internet, but you a talent, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I want people real to know life. about you. Yeah, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Real life. Yeah. Like you were saying, like, it, it's different when you touch people on the internet, and it's different when you in the flesh with people, and like, you know, them being able to see your energy. So, you know, we've been going around, like, you know, different states and cities, and me actually getting out there and actually meet people in person and get them to know me because who I am on the internet is Junebug but like who I am in person is completely different you know what I'm saying experience just hearing my story or just you know being able to have this interview people are really getting to see who I am as a person so yeah I think it's well worth it going to these shows or whatnot because like I really you know I'm passionate about dancing and just having fun people being themselves so you know, I really relish them opportunities to like really just be myself, just have fun. Now, for the people that's out there who might just want to reach out to you and do some type of business with you, is there a certain way that they need to reach out to you, or do you want? To... Yeah, you can you can email me at bookthejunebug at gmail dot com. You can also hit me up on Instagram, my manager at. Big two, B I G, the number two management. That's his Instagram, or you can also DM me on my Instagram at Junalee, J U N E E L I T E. I'm very easy to contact. It ain't nothing crazy. So I answer my emails. You know, I ain't bougie. So. Yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah. Um, and we always try our best to make sure we give some type of knowledge to up and coming artists. Um, is there any advice you can give to help an artist who might just be going through whatever rut they might be going through, or situation, or spell, or mm -hmm. whether they up or down? Any type of advice you got for them? Well, I mean, I think I think uh, 
you know, the dry spells, the droughts, it's all natural, it's all part of the journey. Um, I think it's, I think in those times when you like are not having things work for you or you just not having money come in or you just, you know what I'm saying, like at a plateau, like that's when you really find out if you really love what you do on your passion. Because I've been there, I mean everybody is going there. You know what I'm saying? Any any success story you hear, whether it's Jay Z, whether it's you know what I'm saying, like Nas, like everybody starts out, you know, in trying times. You know, it's, it's always gonna be like a roller coaster. So I think if you really just love what you do, no matter what happens, you know, whether it's a monetary gain or you actually blow up or you don't blow up, like you know what I'm saying, I'm content with, you know, where I am in my life or just not blowing up ever because, like, this is what I love to do, you know what I'm saying? So if you really love what you do, it doesn't really matter where you're going to get in life as far as monetary gain. Um, it's always going to come. It's going to come regardless. If you get good at anything, it's definitely going to come. Your time is going to come. But when it's hard, you know what I'm saying, just keep going, keep pushing. Don't ever quit. Be consistent. And that's what happened for me. And I finally blew up and after years of being a drought, so don't ever quit. Congratulations. Will, in the back you got for for the artists out there? Man, same people you see coming to ladder, you're gonna see coming down. Treat people the same and stay sucker free. And I appreciate y'all, man. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate this, man. Y'all get a chance to support him, you know. Um, good guy, you know. A, a good good spirit guy. From the time I walked in, you know, I, I kind of feed our spirits. And, and um, you know, from the time I walked up in, he had a, a, a real good heart of spirit. So support that situation. That's the so, I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all.